So after all your finished sanding is done and you're satisfied with the surface, you're ready for finish. I'm going to blow off the dust from all the sanding process. This is in Loma 7. And the first coat we're going to put on is shellac. Shellac's a, a very good product for bringing out the color of the wood. It's very sticky. It's made from the lac beetle and it's an alcohol base and it evaporates very quickly. So when you put shellac on, you want to put it on a surface and then not go back to that surface because it's probably going to be too sticky for you to uh, work with until it's full of dry. About a tablespoon or a teaspoon at a time. We want to put on enough that the, the surface is fully wetted so the shellac uh, br is fully in touch with the wood, there's no dry spots, but we don't want to put on so much that we create runs or drips or sags because those look pretty horrible and they're very hard to get out after they're dry. So we're doing all the services and now you have a chance to check this. Uh, so bright light is very important because this will help you see any sags or drips and you can get rid of those at this time. Let it dry for an hour. You'll feel the surface and you'll notice that there's a roughness. This is normal. Uh, and so we do a process called scuff sanding. Scuff sanding is not sanding like we've done before. Its only goal is to take off the high spots. If you put too much pressure on, you'll just remove the shellac that you put on. Uh, but if you can take off the high spots, then we put another coat down, then we're building a finish and we're doing it uh, smoothly. So you can either do a fast or slow, but the key is light pressure and don't concentrate the pressure on any one corner or point because it'll instantly remove the, the shellac. Okay, that's much smoother. If you feel a rough spot, then a little more scuff sanding there. Now, after another hour, um, apply a second coat, let it dry for an hour, scuff sand again. Oh, the, the grit size, start with 220, and then you'll go with finer grits as we add more coats. Now, this is water-based lacquer. Uh, this finish will leave a nice satin appearance, but uh, we'll use it both for both the neck and the body. And I'm going to put on two coats. It needs to dry 30 minutes in between each coat, and before you put on the second coat, you would scuff sand with a finer grit, maybe 320 or 400, or steel wool. This is much more forgiving as a finish. It, uh, it's not sticky uh, after you put it down, and it's water-based, so it doesn't dry, evaporate as quickly as the shellac. Unfortunately, it doesn't leave the nice, doesn't bring the wood color out like shellac does. That's why we use it. Cleaning up fret slots. <coughs> now we're ready to cut frets. Uh, I cut six frets to two inches long, cutting multiple at once here in the Beverly shear, and then I cut the rest of my frets at two and three eighths long. Uh, the, unfortunately, the, the Beverly shear mangles uh, the fret end, actually, all, all shears would. So we're going to sand these square to get rid of that mangled edge. Those are the lining up all my, my two inch frets. And then I line up my two and three fits, and then I install them in this jig, and I sand them to length. <coughs> this is very loud. Uh, you can use your hand there to support the frets so they don't go flying across the room, or tape. Sand them right up until the edge of that aluminum, and no further, and that'll set the frets to length, and also square them at the other end. Of course, we put the squared end backside. And now comes the perhaps most tedious part of the process, and that is all those fret ends are very sharp and uh, would be a very uncomfortable guitar to play if we left them that way. So we're going to round over all the sharp edges and the goal is to make a spherical or hemispherical shape on the end of the fret. So we hold the fret at different angles, pull it at different um, on different parts of the end. There's a variety of techniques for this. Uh, if you get tired of the sandpaper, um, you can use a random orbit sander. That's 120 grit. And just hold the fret at a variety of angles against the uh, outer perimeter there. And 
and you'll get a nice hemispherical shape uh, a lot faster. So that's a reasonably good one for our kind of a project. You can go finer if you like. Okay, now we install the fret in the slot, uh, 1 32nd inch clearance on each side, and then put it in the fret press to push it into place. I line it up uh, left and right with those magic marker lines, and then press it in. And you can check it to see if it's fully flush. When you get to the headstock, you'll need to use that support block to clear the uh, press fixture. Once the, all the frets are in, we need to check for high frets. A high fret will cause buzzing in the string. So I use a long straight edge and I rock it looking for that kind of rocking sound and, and now I look for the fulcrum. And this takes a while. Hopefully you won't have too many of these. You might have none, but um, it's very important to check for them. Okay, there was my high fret, and it was on one side. It wasn't high on the LS side, so I concentrate the pressure of the press on that side. Press a little harder than I did before, because not so, not real hard, because we don't want to create a low fret. That would create yet another problem. Now we check uh, s um, frets with smaller lengths of straight edges, so five frets at a time, three frets at a time. There I found another high fret also on um, one side of the neck. And so I try to concentrate the pressure, just a little more pressure than before. And now we use a very small machine of square to check three frets at a time. 